One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. If you were to ask people that are in my immediate circle, Let's say my husband, my mom, my business besties, my friends from childhood, or just anybody that knows me, my brothers, they would tell you that I'm a pretty positive person. Like I'm not part of this whole movement of like toxic positivity, which is something I heard recently. I never really knew that was a thing until I heard people talking about this like overabundance of positivity but I will say that most of the time, I'm pretty optimistic. I'm a glass half full kind of girl. But today, I want to talk to you about some negative connotations, okay? And what we're really going to dive into is why you won't make any money podcasting. Oh, your ears just parked up. You're like, oh, wait, 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 wait. But Crystal, you always teach us how to do things and the right way to do things and the right order and the steps that we need to take. So now you're going to tell us why we won't be able to achieve it? Yes, because you need to hear this. Because today's episode is a lot more about mindset and the things that I want you to avoid, but I really want to dive into why you won't make any money podcasting. So let's get right to it. Welcome to the Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? So like I said in the beginning, I truly do pride myself in being a positive person, right? Like this is probably one of the reasons why you enjoy listening to this podcast. I like to crack up at myself and make jokes and be silly and just start 
rhyming and rapping and talking about nonsense at any given moment. This is just part of my personality. But today, I want to dive more into the specifics that can kind of come with a not so positive thing that we need to talk about. And I'm going to break down four reasons why you won't make any money podcasting. Okay. And if you don't already know this, this is kind of like one of those ninja mind tricks that you would do in an interview, right? Like, I'm going to give you weaknesses, but I'm really going to say these are actually my strengths. I don't have any weaknesses, right? It's one of those ninja mind tricks. Okay. So just pay attention. Okay. Because I am offering solutions here today, but I wanted to first format these in a reasons, like four reasons why you won't make money. That way you are more motivated to figure these out so you do make money with your podcast. That makes sense, right? Okay, yeah, okay. I'm glad we're on the same page because we're just gonna dive in. I have four reasons that we're gonna dive into today and I wanna make sure that we cover them all thoroughly so like I said, you don't make these mistakes. So, Reason number one why you won't ever make any money podcasting is you are chasing downloads, okay? And chasing downloads, what does this look like? What does this mean? This means that you are just focused on numbers. You wanna know how many listeners you have, how many downloads are there, and if those numbers aren't to your liking, if you are not hitting your goals, then you're probably just going to quit. Mm, I know that resonated with someone. I know it did. I can feel it in my bones that someone is listening to this and they're like, ooh, that's me. I've been really focused on hitting my first thousand downloads. And I've told myself, if I don't hit this, then I'm just going to walk away. Podcasting isn't for me. If that is you, if you are listening to this right now, please have an open mind and please, please, please understand that you can do this and that you can keep going forward. I share this all the time, but it took me close to five months to get my first 1,000 downloads for my podcast. And I say that and cringe a little bit because I have had so many students and so many clients and members of this community hit a thousand downloads in their first month and be able to achieve that. Sometimes like as soon as they launch their podcast, they're like, I have someone in the community that was like, oh, I got 10,000 downloads in the first two months of my podcast. And (laughs) you want to talk about one of those, like, I'm happy for you and just like, 80% happy, 20% jealous. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? That episode of Friends where Rachel and Phoebe are like, yeah, like we're kind of happy for it, but I'm like, I'm 60% happy, only 40% jealous kind of thing. Yeah, I hope you know, like you're nodding along. You're like, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. But they weren't chasing downloads. Those happened because maybe they had a bigger audience than I did whenever I first started. Y'all, I didn't start with an audience, okay? If you... Look at my social media. I still don't have a huge following, but there are members of this community that do, and they see different numbers whenever they launch their podcast, but their downloads are directly correlated with how much of an audience they start out with. I started at basically zero. I had a few friends and family members that were following me on social media whenever I decided to change my accounts from personal to a business account. And then I had a bunch of people following me from a different part of my journey that no longer made sense. Like it wasn't even about podcasting. So if there were people following me, they were following me for the wrong reasons and that didn't matter anyway. So I don't want you to think that you are behind if you are starting at zero. But I also don't want you to chase downloads because we are talking about reasons why you won't make money, right? If you are chasing downloads, that means if one day you miss the mark, right? Let's say you put out a piece of content that is subpar, maybe it just was a little off in the messaging or it just didn't resonate with your audience and your numbers go down, then you're gonna feel deflated, 
And you're going to say, man, like this just isn't, this, this, this is terrible. I'm, I'm a crap podcaster. I'm terrible. I just need to stop. Your heart is in it for the wrong reasons. If you are just chasing downloads and chasing listeners, you are not podcasting because of your message. And I've talked about your why before. So I really want you to think about that is why are you podcasting? Think about that throughout this whole episode today. Why are you actually podcasting? Because if you don't understand that, then you probably won't understand why you actually want to make money with your podcast. So I'll give you a quick, like my why for podcasting is because I've seen the ripple effect of what I do has been able to help not just other podcasters, but those podcasters audience who in turn can help the, like more people in their community or their family. And that to me is why I keep going, why I keep podcasting. But the reason why I do this to make money is to pay my bills, is to achieve goals and dreams that I have for my business. And to be honest, it's to show my children, right? I have three boys. It's to show them that I have really big dreams that from being a stay-at-home mom to running my own business, they are seeing all of this unfold before their eyes. So that's kind of my why. Just wanted to tell you a little bit behind the scenes, but we're gonna get back to, okay, so that's reason number one. Why you won't make money podcasting is if you are busy chasing downloads, because I can tell you, my friends, downloads do not convert to dollars. And I'm gonna say that again. Downloads don't convert to to dollars. And maybe you're like, yeah, but Crystal, I've heard, you know, sponsors, they want to see lots of downloads and they want to see that you're reaching all these people and they want to see this and they want to see that. But I can tell you, I have seen campaigns, right? Like a campaign is whenever a sponsor works with a brand, works with an influencer, and they endorse them for a little bit until their engagement falls off. Or what if they have a bad day? And what if they have a bad month? And then all of a sudden, they're just like, ah, we're just going to pull the plug. And they no longer want to be partners with you because your downloads aren't there. Well, then what what solid foundation have you built? It's kind of like the rug just got pulled out from under you. If something were to happen. I think of like a catastrophic event, like let's say you had to care for a friend or a family member and you just weren't mentally and creatively in a space to continue to make content for your audience. Well, your sponsors aren't going to like that. And they're going to say, you know, I just don't know that we can work with you anymore. And that breaks my heart, but that's like the reality of business. So I want you to to have other reasons why you would ever want to pursue making money with your podcast. And I do not want it to be that you are just chasing downloads. Okay, I was a long-winded one. Okay, but there there was a lot of uh, fun principles to teach in that moment, and I felt like I needed to bring those up. So number one is chasing downloads. Number two, you will not make money with your podcast if you're talking to the wrong audience. Now, what do I mean by this? So this could be a few different things. You've probably heard me talk on the podcast, if you've been listening for a while, about your ideal listener. Now, your ideal listener is the person who you want to most reach, and the ideal listener for this podcast, just to kind of give you a little behind the scenes, is whenever I am speaking on this podcast, I'm always imagining one person, one person, not 50,000 people, not 20 people, not even five people. I am thinking about one specific person in my mind as I'm talking and I'm imagining that we are sitting across the table from one another, drinking coffee, and she is asking me questions. It is a woman. Her name is Rebecca. I have this whole like avatar of who she is and her persona and her background and she has kids and her husband does this and she does that. And like this whole written up thing of who my ideal listener is. But if I did not have that, let's go back to pre-ideal listener because I didn't always have one. I was talking to anybody that would listen. And the reason why this is a bad strategy is because I ended up talking to the wrong audience. How did I know I was talking to the wrong audience? Because 
they were asking me to create content that I wasn't excited about. So if you know this story, I created, my original podcast was called The Rookie Life. And if you go back to episode one of this podcast, you will actually hear it because I left all of those episodes exactly how they were whenever I first started podcasting. If you didn't know that, then there you go. This is another way of helping me show you and reassure you we all start somewhere. These are my, I didn't go back and edit these and change them and make the sound, but I didn't do any of that. What you hear on this podcast in the first, I want to say it's the first 45 episodes, is the original podcast that I left. I didn't change it. I didn't go back to make it sound better than it was whenever I originally aired it because I wanted you to see the progression of what it looks like to podcast for 178 episodes, right? Like that is the episode today. You would not be listening to this episode had I not made all the mistakes that I did in the first 40, let's just call it the first 100, okay? Like there's lots of mistakes that I made in a lot of these episodes. But then at one point, it was probably about, um, I don't know the exact moment, like as far as putting out content, but I do remember a time whenever I got an email from someone in my audience and they were pitching me a guest that I should have on the show. And I remember thinking, I don't want to talk to this person. And it wasn't because I wasn't interested in who they were as a human being and hearing their story. I just got to a point where I was like, I just don't know that I'm super thrilled about this audience anymore, right? And that, it makes me, it makes me cringe a little bit to even say that out loud because it almost makes me sound like I didn't care about those people, about the people in my audience anymore. But what was really happening is that I was talking to a very general audience, but I was ready to go way more specific. The people that I had been talking to for a while kind of got me excited, but I got to the point where I felt like it was Groundhog Day and I was talking about the same thing over and over and over again. And I wasn't lit on fire every time I sat down to record my podcast. It wasn't until I started talking to people who wanted to start a podcast that I got lit on fire again. And I started getting really excited when I sat down to plan episodes and I started thinking about ideas. I got excited about going into Facebook groups and collecting questions that people had from different communities and really just exploring ways that I could get better at podcasting and how to share these resources and tools with my audience. I got so excited. I don't know if you hear that in my voice, but I got super excited whenever I realized the person that I really wanted to talk to. And I can actually show you, I'm going to post, uh, go to crystalprofit.com slash episode 178. I'm going to show you, there is proof in the numbers of what it looks like for me to be talking to the wrong audience. And then immediately you can tell once I found my footing, once I found my message, and once I found the right audience that I was supposed to be speaking to. Because there's a pretty flat, like um, if you're thinking of a bar graph, right? Or just think of a chart that goes from on one side, you have the number of downloads on the left, uh, vertical access. Oh, hang on, let me get my let me get my algebra skills going now. Is that algebra? Hang on. Graphs, right? X plus Y equals Z. That's what I'm thinking now. That's algebra. But is that the graph? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. I, I passed all those. It's just been a long time since I did a lot of the math. So anyway, so the horizontal axis, right? So you have the Y axis and the X axis. X is across. Yeah, I'm just embarrassing so, myself at this point. But the horizontal axis is time. So I'm going to post in the show notes the time as it has gone on. I'm going to show you from whenever I started, I originally uploaded my trailer episode in June of 2018, officially launched in July, and I didn't really hit a stride in downloads until May or June of the next year. It was almost a full year of podcasting before I actually hit my stride. So I don't, I don't say this to discourage you if you're just like, oh my gosh, Crystal, I have to 
wait a whole year before I hit my stride? No, 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 friend. If you are listening to this podcast on a regular basis, you will hit your stride way sooner because on this podcast and on my YouTube channel and on my social media, I'm teaching you all the things that I either did wrong or I wish I would have known whenever I first started. So you are absolutely in the right place. But I want to show you what it was like for me to be talking to the wrong audience and what happened whenever I finally found exactly who I needed to speak to. And maybe you're asking, yeah, but Crystal, what does this have to do with making money? Well, this has everything to do with it because once I found the exact person who I was speaking to, they started asking me to create things for them. It wasn't until I found this audience that I realized, oh, they want me to put together opt-ins and freebies and PDFs and workbooks and boot camps to make their lives easier whenever they're figuring out podcasting. So that's really where I started. I started growing my email list and figuring out what this new audience, this ideal listener needed. And from there, I started selling things to them. And to my surprise, they started buying them. And this is really where I get super pumped because I want you to know the timeline of how all this has worked for me because you can replicate this and you can do it so much faster because like I said, you are listening to this podcast. I'm giving you the do's and don'ts of what has happened to me on my journey so you can get there five times faster. I want you, like I said, it took me a year. I want you to find your audience and hit your stride in your first month or your first three months or even your first six months. I want to see steady growth of your show. And that is really why I wanted to share these things here with you today. So, okay, so just to recap, number one, first reason why you won't make money podcasting is chasing downloads. Number two is talking to the wrong audience. And then number three is asking before you serve. Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Asking before you serve. So what does this mean? This is what I would call someone who launches a podcast and only talks about their own products, their own services, everything that they sell. They talk about themselves And they are just constantly asking you, go buy my product, go follow me on social media, go subscribe to my YouTube channel, go buy my thing, sign up for my service, do this, do that, me, 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 I, I, I. I do not subscribe to this idea. I don't think that it is good business practice, and I don't think that it is a great way to grow a community. And honestly, I just love people who have a servant's heart And they are ready to show up for other people before themselves. Now, let's just be clear. I'm not saying you got to be a doormat. No, 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 no. Do not put those words into my mouth. You are not a doormat for other people. But what you are is you are serving those people in your community, your ideal listener, so that whenever you do ask to sell something or to say, hey, come join me on this masterclass that I'm teaching or sign up for my freebie or come follow me on social media or do this or do that. You have your calls to action and they are so excited because they're like, yes, they have shown up every single week and delivered so much value. They've changed my life. They've helped save my marriage. They've saved me money. They've helped me with my children. They've shown me how to meal plan. They've done this. They've done that. I, they helped me lose 10 pounds. They helped me gain my sanity back. They helped me with this or that. 
that's the mentality I want your listeners to have. I want them to say, heck yes, I am so ready. Like whatever you have coming at me, I am ready to buy it. I'm ready, like I am interested because of how much you have given before you've ever asked. And I was trying to actually find this in a book that I read. And I have a book in front of me, but I couldn't find it in here. So I don't want to quote that it came from this book. I'm actually going to go find it on Goodreads and I'm going to post it in the show notes of this episode. But it was it was a book that I read and it was saying, it was a sales book, okay? Like, ooh, nonfiction business book, real sexy and exciting, right? Well, this is what I like to read. Leave me alone. This is my choice. But it was saying that 90% of the time, you should be giving stuff away for free. And there's only a 10% of your business where you should be asking people for something. And I really take this to heart. So if you've ever wondered like, you know, why why doesn't Crystal sell her products in every single one of her podcast episodes? Or why doesn't she go on um, Facebook Live and talk about her course every single time? Or why doesn't she go on Instagram and sell her membership I could do all of those things all of the time. But you know what that would be? Annoying, right? (laughs) Like it would be annoying. And I can say that because I have seen so many people do this and do this in the absolute wrong way. And it is annoying. It's almost like those people that immediately friend you. You find like you have like a commonality in like a Facebook group or something and they immediately friend you, you know, send you a friend request. and You're like, oh, yeah, we were kind of, you know, hitting it off in this group. Maybe we could, you know, chat about stuff. And then they hit you up to sign up for something under them or they're like, hey, buy my thing. I saw you were interested in that. And then you can't get rid of them. They're like a gnat all of a sudden, and you're just like swatting them away. Like, oh my gosh, I cannot get rid of this person because they are, they're needy. They're asking you all the time. And here you are, you're like, I don't even know what you do. I don't even know if you know what you're talking about. I don't even know, like, what resources do you have? Why should I believe you? Who are you? Where did you come from? This is my natural reaction Whenever I see that someone is asking something of me, I immediately put a wall up, like I have my boundaries, right? I like throw this wall up and I'm like, but who are you? And if they don't have content, if they don't have something that I can go check out who they are and are they actually putting stuff out on a regular basis, I'm like, I, why would I trust you? right? Why would I even think twice about working with you if you don't have anything other than your word? I'm sorry. Like maybe that means I have trust issues. If I can't just go off someone's word that they are the expert in something when they don't have anything to back it up. I'm not going to spend my hard earned money with someone who just says, oh, just trust me. I know what I'm doing. Not in this day and age, guys. I want to see you serving your audience before you ever ask them to do anything. I want you creating content. And this actually brings me to my fourth point. The fourth reason why you won't make any money podcasting is if you are not being consistent. This kind of goes hand in hand with number three. Number three is asking before you serve. But number four is if you are not being consistent, why would I trust you? It's kind of like that friend that's really flaky. I'm sure everybody has this friend, right? Where they say they're going to show up at three o'clock and you're like, well, it's 730 and they're still not here. So we should go ahead and eat dinner, right? (laughs) Do you have that friend or family member where you're just like, well, they said they were going to be here, but you know, they didn't show up last time. So why should we believe them? I hate to say that, but I know people like that in my life, and I'm sure you do too, and I don't want you to be that person with your podcast. I want people to know when you say you're going to put an episode out on a Wednesday, it's going to be there on a Wednesday, and whenever you say you're going to show up, you're going to be there. You're going to show up consistently every single week because that is what builds trust. That is what makes me get to know people who I eventually spend money with. And I got to say, you guys, ever since I started this online journey, I've spent a few pretty pennies 
on getting educated in the online world. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, I spent like $100 and it was like so, no. I, at this point in my journey, I've spent thousands of dollars getting educated on online marketing, on blogging, and just different ways that I can bring all of my, like, just take it to the next level in digital courses, in copy, Facebook ads. Like, I have spent money on courses with people that I trust. And why do I trust them? Because they show up consistently, right? Like, I could Google, let's say, Amy Porterfield, Marie Forleo, I'm thinking of all the people I've really been referencing in the last two years. And I would think Donald Miller, if you don't know, uh, Building a Story Brand is one of my favorite marketing books ever. Seth Godin, he has a book called This Is Marketing. He has a, a lot of fantastic marketing books. But he, I was subscribed to his daily blog for a really long time. And I would just read his emails every single day. And he offered value way before I ever bought a book from him all the time. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I have to buy this book. It was a no brainer for me because I thought you know, he has delivered so much value for me. Sure, I'm gonna buy this $12 book because I know it's gonna be value packed. So that is why people will buy from you is if you are showing up consistently, if you are serving before you ever ask them to buy anything, if you are talking to the right audience and you're not chasing downloads. Do you see what I did there? I just took all four of those reasons and flipped them on their head. So I'm gonna say that again, right? We have all of our four reasons. I'm gonna say them in the reverse order and I'm gonna put a positive spin on them because these are the four reasons why you will make money with a podcast. And that is, you are consistent every single week. You are putting out brand new content. You are serving before you ever ask your audience anything. I want you to offer value, 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 value on a consistent basis to your audience before you ever ask anything of them. And then I want to make sure that you are talking to the right ideal listener, talk to the right audience and you should always be checking in like am I still is my message on the right track are we still on the right you know uh the path that we need to be on with our content ask yourself this and don't chase downloads don't chase listeners because I can promise you if you get to a million listeners and realize you're talking to the wrong audience or people that don't get you excited you're not going to be fulfilled that way anyway right no one wants to just collect checks for talking about something they're not really excited about. I mean, maybe you're okay with that. Maybe you could talk about, I'm just trying to think of something really off off the cuff. I'm actually, I'm looking at my ring light. I have a ring light in my office and I'm looking at these little brackets. Could you talk about small plastic brackets for the rest of your life if someone just sent you a check? I'm sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't. Maybe this is just my personality, but if someone asked me to sit down in front of a microphone, in front of a camera, and talk about small plastic brackets for the rest of my life, I don't think I could do it. I guess I could do it and be dead inside. <laughs> I would not be excited to do it at all, but then like, what kind of person would that make me? I couldn't do it. So I don't want you chasing downloads. I want you to be authentic. I want you to show up and serve your audience and just make a difference. Like that's really at the core what my hope is for every single podcaster that I come into contact with is I want them to make a difference in whatever that means to them. And I actually have a few students of mine. I'm, I'm thinking of Brittany Binion. She has the Pose for Success podcast and she has made a difference in helping her clients be able to either take their own photography, uh, brand photography pictures, or how to find the right brand photographer for them, or how to set up their own photo shoots at their home in a way that's going to really, really bring out their brand. And just, I, I'm just so impressed with everything that she's done with her podcast in the last six months. I guess it's been eight months at this point because she launched in January. So I'm just, oh my gosh, I just realized it was August. Like time flies whenever 
you look at someone who was like so excited. She was nervous to start in January. And I look at her now and I just see confidence. I see a confident podcaster and I can see how much she is serving her people and showing up in a big way on a consistent basis. And I know whenever I have any questions about photography, brand photography, I go to her podcast and I see, does Brittany have something about this? Because I have established her in my mind as the authority in brand photography. I want to go hear what she has to say. And this is just the exact same thing that can happen for you and your podcast, but you got to get going. And I know some of you are listening right now and you're just trying to figure out your podcast journey, then I highly encourage you go back to previous episodes and figure out where you're stuck. Because I can promise you, I have become so obsessed with my ideal listener that there are questions that that your questions will be answered in those episodes. And if they aren't, I encourage you to reach out to us. We have a Facebook community that is the Profit Podcast Online Community. Reach out in the Facebook group. If you are still struggling with a specific question that you can't find the answer to anywhere, we would be happy to address those. But I'm just really excited about people making money with their podcast. I really just, I told y'all, at the beginning of August, that this was going to be my focus is how to make money with a podcast because I want everyone to get over the idea that they have to have millions of downloads and thousands of listeners because it's just not true. I want to see you get past these four roadblocks of why you wouldn't make money with a podcast and flip it on its head. Exactly what we just did. I want to see you taking action to make sure that whenever you are ready to create a digital product or create a membership or start providing workshops for your audience, whatever monetization looks like for you, I want you to be ready and feel confident that you are making the right decision for you, your podcast, and your audience. But that's all I have for you today, guys. It was just like, it it was so fun. And I actually wanted to tell you real fast about There is a brand new resource that Amy Porterfield, I'm sure you've heard me talk about her recently on the podcast as my mentor and some of the things that she's taught me about my own path to podcasting success with my digital course, Profit Podcasting. Most of that has come from the brilliant mind of Amy. And I wanted to bring this up today because she has a brand new resource out that is called the Ultimate Course Starter Kit, or sorry, the Ultimate Course Creation Starter Kit. I wanted to make sure and got that right. But this is so incredible. I talked about it at length in the last episode. So go check out episode 177 because I actually went through like a walkthrough. I scanned through it and I talked a little bit about it on the show. But you can grab this at crystalprofit.com slash starter kit. And it will actually point you to Amy's new resource, which is so helpful. So if you are thinking about creating a digital course or you just kind of want to play around with the idea, like what would that look like? I highly encourage you to go check out this free resource. Did you hear what I said? Free as in zero dollars and zero cents. Like all you have to do is give her your email address and you are good to go. You have this It's a 19-page workbook that actually takes you through course creation. And oh my gosh, you guys, I was looking through this and thinking, this is how I can make my course better. The next, and I'm on version, this will be version 3.0 whenever I record my course this next time. So I highly encourage you go grab it. And if you haven't already, join us in Amy's 30-day pop-up boot camp. If you're listening to this later, if it's already pat, it's way further in 2020 or beyond, then the boot camp might be shut down. So if you're listening to this in real time, I want you to go get an Amy's boot camp. There are close to 10,000 people in this Facebook community, and Amy is going live in there every single week and doing trainings related to this starter kit. And she is answering questions live. She's doing live Q&As. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I'm gonna say it now. I think that she's doing hot seats 
like where you get the opportunity to have some one-on-one coaching with Amy later in the month, which sounds incredible. And I can tell you from experience, those hot seats can be life-changing. I don't know if you know this. I did a hot seat with Amy in 2019, and it was the one thing that changed everything for my business. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's 100% true that that one conversation that I had with her absolutely changed everything for me. So that's all I'm going to say about it. Go to crystalprofit.com slash Amy Bootcamp to join us in the Facebook group. I'm in there all the time. I'm popping in and out, encouraging people, giving people virtual high fives. It's what I do. I love being a cheerleader for course creators and podcasters, and it's just so much fun for me. And it goes back to just really serving people. I love having a servant's heart. It lights me up. And I like to think of that rule, the 90% of showing up and serving and 10% of asking. Amy absolutely just shines like a freaking rock star in this area. And I just want you to see it firsthand. If anything, if anything, I want you to go join this boot camp to see a rock star performing live because that's what she is. Once she gets behind that camera, oh my gosh, like there's just no stopping her. So go join the boot camp, go grab the starter kit, make sure that you have taken her quiz to decide whether a digital course is even right for you. But go check out all of these links. So if you're like, Crystal, you just gave me like seven URLs. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Go to the show notes. I'm gonna have exactly step-by-step what you need to do, where you need to find everything. But that's all I have for you today, guys. So go check out the show notes, crystalprofit.com slash episode 178. And remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in the upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs.